In the book of an Imam Ibn Majah and a Tirmidhi, and it was classified as sound Hassan by Sheikh Al Albani on the authority of Anas ibn Malik. The Prophet said, Kull ibn Adam khatta. All the descendants of Adam commit sins. And the best amongst those who commit sins are those who frequently turn to Allah in repentance. Tawab is a form that reflects frequency and exaggeration in the verb. Just like khatta is always committing sins, tawab, fa'al, always turns to Allah Azza wa Jal in repentance. For this nature in mankind, the nature of being inclined towards sinning and shortcoming and mistakes, Allah Azza wa Jal opened the door for repentance for us continues. So it's, it's a process of a lifetime. It's a continuous matter. It's not something that you do once and you stop. Why? Because we simply don't stop sinning. We simply don't stop committing mistakes. And therefore, we simply need to continuously turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in repentance. And from the mercy and grace of Allah Azza wa Jal upon mankind, is that he did not block this gate, the gate of repentance, until death. As reported by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, and this is uh, also in the book of Imam uh, Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, and classified as well as Hassan by Sheikh al-Albani. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah will continue to accept repentance from the slave unless his soul starts departing, meaning until the point of death. So Allah Azza wa Jal, out of mercy, out of kindness and grace from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, opened this door of repentance until we die. So that leaves no excuse not to turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in repentance. Not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal calls upon us to, re, to turn to Him in repentance. In a, in a call in the Qur'an that's overwhelmingly merciful and loving. Listen to these verses or to this verse in chapter Az-Zumar. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say O oh Muhammad, say, Ya Ibadi, my slaves who have excessively transgressed against themselves in sinning, don't despair on the mercy of Allah. For Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, he is oft forgiven, ever merciful. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal did not only call upon us believers to turn to Him in repentance. Brothers and sisters, listen to the following statement of Ibn Abbas. Radiallahu anhu an Abi. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal 
called upon those who attributed the son to him. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرٌ ابْنُ اللَّهِ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ الْمَسِيحُ ابْنُ اللَّهِ The Jews said, Uzair is the son of Allah. And the Christians said, Al-Masih, Isa, Jesus is the son of Allah. They said, يَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولَةِ Allah is stingy. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ يَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولَةِ The Jews said, Allah's hand is folded, he's stingy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَقِيرٌ They said Allah is poor. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَةٌ They said Allah is one in three, Trinity. Allah Azzawajal called upon the children of Israel saying, أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ Will they not then repent to Allah? وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ And ask His forgiveness. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And Allah is oft forgiven, ever merciful. Can you imagine the magnitude of mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, that He overlooks all of this insult and abusive language and behavior by the children of Israel and yet calls them to repent and promises them to forgive and be merciful on them? Subhanallah. Wallahi, if there is no bounty or favor upon us from Allah except that He made us slaves of Him, then it would be enough. Then it's enough for us to be in sujood until we die in gratitude that we are His slaves and not enslaved to anything else or anyone else. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal not only calls upon us, but is pleased when we repent to Him. Allah Azza wa Jal is happy with the repentance of the believers. In the book of Imam Muslim, narrated by Abu Hurairah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make the matter clear how much Allah Azza wa Jal loves that we turn to Him in repentance, gave an example. An example of a person in an open desert. The open desert is, is as described or defined by the scholars. It's a land that you can't see in any of the, its directions the end of it. It's an open, endless land from all directions. He said, whilst a man was traveling in such a land with his camel that had all his provision and water, he took rest under the shade of a tree. And then when he woke up, he discovered that the source of life, meaning food and drink, on the camel has disappeared. The camel is gone. So he started exerting all human efforts. He went left and right, front, back, all directions, looking for that camel, which, has, which had the source of life, food and drink, in an open land. So he gave up. He went back to that tree and rested under it. And with no introductions, when he gave up hope in life and became certain that he's dying, Allah Azza wa Jal brought back that camel and he saw it standing just above his head. 
What happened? This man committed a grave mistake. Said something that is not to be said, only said by kuffar. He said, Allahumma anta abdi wa ana rabbuk. Oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Lord. He meant the opposite. The Prophet ﷺ said, he made that mistake out of joy. And then he said, Allah Azza wa Jal is more pleased with the repentance of one of you than this man's pleasure with the recovery of this camel. Subhanallah. What stops people from repenting to Allah Azza wa Jal? Though Allah Azza wa Jal, and this is the Sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah commands and then He gives you incentives. Though a command means if you don't do it, you'll be sinning, yet Allah Azza wa Jal gives you incentives to fulfill the obligation. Again, out of mercy. Because He knows the nature of Allah Ya'lamu Man Khalaqa. Does He not know those whom He created? He knows the nature of mankind. So He gave them incentives. When you turn to Allah Azza wa in repentance, you gain a lot. Number one, you become amongst the category of those who are loved by Allah. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawwabin. Allah loves those who frequently turn to Him in repentance. And this is an objective sought by every Muslim to become loved by Allah Azza wa Jal. Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen Rahmatullah Alayhi said a statement. He said, the matter is not that you claim love to Allah. What really matters is that Allah Azza wa Jal loves you. So you obtain this love from Allah by frequently repenting to Him from your mistakes. That's one. Two, success. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Turn to Allah in repentance, all of you, O believers, perhaps that you attain success, forgiveness. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Taha, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى I will forgive those count who repent believe and act righteously and remain firm upon guidance so the first quality for those who will be deserving of oft forgiveness from Allah, ghaffar, again, khatta, tawab, fa'al, it's continuous and exaggerated. Allah Azza wa Jal says, I will abundantly forgive those who repent. Don't we want to be loved? Don't we want to be forgiven? Don't we want to be successful? Don't we want to be admitted into Jannah? إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنْ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ Allah Azza wa Jal said, those who repent, believe and act righteously, will enter Jannah. You know when we have problems, we seek a righteous, pious person, a scholar, a student of knowledge, a devout worshiper, and say, Shaykh, please supplicate Allah for me. I am going through hardships. Correct? Don't we do that? Yeah. Because we believe that it's more than likely that someone who's that pious, Allah Azza wa Jal will accept his dua. Listen to this magnificent prize from Allah Azza wa Jal for those who
who repent. They will not get a human being to supplicate for them. They will get the angels to supplicate for them. And they're not going to get just any angel to supplicate for them. They will get the angels who carry the throne of Allah. Listen up. Beautiful verses in Surah Ghafir. الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ Those who carry the throne of Allah and those around them praise Allah Azza wa Jal exalt Allah Azza wa Jal with praise وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ and believe in Him وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and ask Allah's forgiveness for those who believe. Rabbana, Rabbana wasi'ta kulla shay'in rahmatan wa ilma. Our Lord, you have encompassed everything with knowledge and mercy. Faghfir lilladheena tabu. So forgive those who repent. فَاغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ Forgive those who repent and followed your path. وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ And protect them from the fire of hell. رَبَّنَا وَأَدْخِلْهُمْ جَنَّاتِ عَدْنٍ الَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ O Allah! extra prizes admit them into the gardens of adam which you have promised them not only them and those who are righteous from their parents wives and offspring إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ You, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the almighty, the all-wise. وَقِهِمُ السَّيِّئَاتِ Extra. Protect them from the consequence of evil deeds. وَمَنْ تَقِ السَّيِّئَاتِ يَوْمَئِذٍ فَقَدْ رَحِمْتَهِ And those whom you protect from the evil consequence of their evil or from the consequence of their evil, you have indeed bestowed your, your mercy upon them. So the angels don't just supplicate. They supplicate for a lot of good for those who repent. Another benefit is that we protect ourselves from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal has set a punishment for sins. But those who repent before dying protect themselves from this allocated or designated Punishment Allah Azza wa Jal set for those people. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, At-ta'ibu min al-dhambi kamal la dhamba lah. He who repents from his sin as if he has never committed the sin. So that's a protection from what was expected to be a punishment for that sin. And I will conclude with this. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen rahmatullahi alayhi said, A sign of an accepted repentance is that Allah Azza wa Jal enables the slave to perform a good deed after it. So repentance is also a source, when it's sincere, of more good deeds. A story that's amazing, narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, 
and it's reported by Abu Nu'aym in Al Hilya. When Abu Musa radiallahu anhu was on his deathbed, he kept going off and regaining consciousness. And so one time, when he regained consciousness, he looked at his children who were surrounding him and said, Ay Bunay, Udkuru Sahib al O oh my children, remember the man with the loaf of bread. And he lost consciousness. Now he left them puzzled. What is he talking about? And this is not just any person, this is Abu Musa al Ash'ari, a companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It must be something that's very important for us to know. And then he gained consciousness again. So they immediately asked him, Ya abatahu, wa ma sahibu al-raghif? Oh father, what is the story of this man with the loaf of bread? So he went on narrating the story of a monk from the children of Israel. He said, there was a monk from amongst the people of Israel or the children of Israel who was a devout worshiper who worshipped Allah Azza wa Jal for 70 consecutive years, never sinned once. And he would go to the village. He was isolating himself and would go to the village once a year to get provision and sustenance that suffice him and then go back. But our main enemy Shaitan does not give up hope even 70 years later. So Abu Musa said, one of the times he was going down from the mountain where he isolated himself, he came across an attractive, gorgeous woman who stole his heart. And Shaytan continued to whisper to him until he gave in. And he took her and went with her and started committing zina with her and continued to do so for a full week before he finally woke up. It's like someone slapped him on the face and he realized that he has committed something extremely grave and destructive in the scale of Allah So he immediately ran away and started doing the following. He started making a step and then going in prostration, supplicating Allah. Stand up, making a step and going down in prostration, sincere repentance. He would prostrate to Allah with every single step he was making until it became dark. Brothers and sisters, do you imagine? Can you imagine how many prostrations this man has done? Every single step until it became dark. So he saw a group of poor and needy people who were sitting at, on the side of the road. So he just threw himself amongst them. And there was a man, these were poor people who would sit there daily and expect a loaf of bread each from a man who would give that to them in charity daily. And there were 12. And this monk came and threw himself in the middle, so the total became, naturally, 13. The man came with the usual number of loaves of bread, 12, and started throwing a loaf of bread to each person. So 
when it came turn, the, the turn of the monk, who was not supposed to be amongst them, he threw the bread, the loaf of bread, and the monk caught it and kept it. When he reached number 12, which is in reality number 11 from the poor, he ran out of bread. So number 13, who is actually number 12, said, where is my loaf of bread? I didn't get any. Now they did not realize what's going on. Who was watching? The monk. The man said, did any of you take two loaves of bread? They said, no. He said, look, I have emptied my bag. I have no more bread. By Allah, I did not cheat you. I have nothing for you. Having realized that he was the one who took the loaf of bread that belonged to that poor, the monk immediately turned around and threw the loaf of bread to that twelfth poor and gave it up and died. What happened? This man, when his deeds started getting weighed, the seven years of worship and obedience to Allah were put on one side of the scale. Seven years. That's a long, long period of self-control and devotion to Allah. And on the other, side, uh, the other side of the scale, seven days, an interval of seven days of sin. Naturally, one would think, what's seven days compared to 70 years? The seven days overweighed the 70 years. And then the loaf of bread was brought and placed on the other side of the scale. And it overweighed the seven days. And he was forgiven and admitted into Jannah. What an end. What a beautiful result. What a beautiful prize from Allah Azza wa Jal. This man was sincere in his repentance to Allah. So Allah Azza wa Jal enabled him as a result of his sincerity in repentance he enabled him to do a deed that many people will deem insignificant. What's a loaf of bread? You know, it's not a big deal. I'm not giving up a treasure. Yes, but it means a lot to Allah. And he was forgiven. Again, brothers, sisters, half of the month already finished. But don't despair. We still have a full half to catch up. We still have another half to make up. Whatever we wanted to do and didn't, we still can. Make a firm, determined repentance in your heart right now as you're listening to me to give up all sins. We all know ourselves. Each one of us knows himself and knows the aspects of shortcomings and knows his mistakes, knows his faults, knows the sins he commits. So let's pledge to Allah Azza wa Jal with sincere intention to turn to Him and repent to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and rest assured you will benefit from all these prizes He subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you. I ask Allah Azza wa to enable us all and to accept us all and to pardon us all. Allahumma ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil